thanks for tuning in to another episode of American Garage TV. As you see, I've got a 66 Mustang Coupe right before me, about ready for a release. The owner basically said that he had to buy a Mustang because they were all sold out of Camaros. So, anyways, again, it's 1966 Mustang Coupe. Mustang Coupe came in for a few things and of course we expect the worst hope for the best uh, we've rewired the car completely put in a, um, a new AC unit complete charge the system up she's actually blowing 42 degrees at the vent I mean that's great uh, what else did we do we did a brake upgrade and then um, unfortunately the previous shop a gentleman who passed away uh, the assembly that was chosen didn't line up. There was a lot of slop, so we had to modify the coupler in order to get rid of that slop so he could have a, a very positive and effective brake response. Other than that, we've got ceramic uh, brakes up in front. Uh, that's another thing. Anytime you're doing a conversion, which this is, be sure to keep, collect, and get a file and put all that information in there. So guys like us don't have to sit there for hours on the computer trying to figure out what product this is for. Turns out this is for a GM Buick as far as the brake calipers. We don't know anything more about the discs the, or the rotors basically, they're, they're fine. This currently is a disc front, drum rear. We've got a new seven inch dual diaphragm with a, I think if I'm not mistaken, it is a GM as well on the uh, regards to the uh, master cylinder and let me show you some love pop the hood and then we'll get in the interior it's got the Shelby little scoop going on out there and there she is and now the heart of the vehicle <laughs> the engine that is a blueprint racing uh, 306 uh, flat tappet cam steel heads uh, and she's still a gutsy little motor with a uh, pretty good amount of torque for um, this gentleman. The owner is ju just a cruiser. It's his love of his life. Um, it's got enough balls when he needs to get out of trouble and or just jump the gun and get away, break away, so to speak. It is a four-speed. And what we've done in here is we've reconfigured. We had to change out the, um, like I said, we did a whole new, ended up doing a whole new wiring system. But the AC system was out. We had to change just about every part in here, including the kit. The alternator and wiring were fried, so we took care of that. When we went to test and tune, this was actually a cheap, I won't mention any names, EFI unit. Everybody nowadays thinks, oh, EFI, it's the way to go. It's not really the way to go. If you understand carburation, how to calculate the proper CFM, set it up just set it and forget it same thing with respect to the distributor which is unfortunately in the wrong section should be in the back <laughs> no anyways yeah it's more easy actually uh, it's real easy to access rather than gm right especially that big old uh, efi so and one thing leads to another as we're going through the uh, process of elimination and getting further down the road just remember, you can't put the carriage for the horse, so you're going to find things out. And that's when we learned that this was frozen. So we got this this uh, actually seized, so we had to change that out. We incorporated electric fan setup. We had to wire that in. You can see 
that we have just enough space here to clear that. And then here's the digital uh, brain control, the module. And then we also went with, I believe that is for a 7302 application, which is driver's side for the pickup. And what had happened was the previous shop had stuck it to the passenger side like a first gen Mustang. But the problem is he had this zigzag mixed in with a corrugated um, uh, metal uh, stainless hose and it was just dangling. And it, I mean, nothing was really routed correctly. I think the um, there was two uh, sub fuse panels that were not a main fuse box that you'd see on any automotive vehicle. They're from Amazon. A lot of cheap stuff like that. Uh, sh just a cheap, shoddy direction. So we addressed all those issues. And then when we got it running, we learned that due to the cam, and there's no complaint about it, but the vacuum was not stock. Stock is rated around 17 to 19 inch vac inches of vacuum. This was more around 11. Hence was the reason for that black unit over there, that's by Leeds. That is a an electric vacuum pump. And that helps to assist and actuate, because this is a Mustang, original shock towers. We couldn't get a hydro uh, drive system in here, or not one that we know of, and that has its price. So we went ahead and incorporated the vacuum pump to help assist and keep that upwards of 18 to 19 inches of vac. And she stops on a dime. We redid all the brake lines, front to rear. What else will we do on this babe? We had to literally tear into the dash. Like I said, modify the trunnion set for the um, for the uh, the brake pedal. And, and then again, that was existing, so that's what we had to work with. Like I said, we had to do a little modification. And I'll tell you, trying to get not my fat ass to get underneath that thing. That thing's a that thing's a bitch. I'm going to be honest with you. It's not fun. So we had just got her back from the alignment shop. And I know Sooner barely had any heat in the motor. Went to take off and just breaks the rear end. Ever so, I mean, effortlessly. Jeez. Mm -hmm. Jeez. That's pretty cool. Yeah, this is bad. But nowadays, you know, it's not about Ford, Chevy, Mopar. It's about AFR, Brodex. Uh, Holly, MSD, Wine, Edelbrock. <sighs> Am I missing anybody? I mean, the list goes on. You get my point. Yeah. Comp cams. Yeah. So, um, yeah, to each his own. To us, all this is is a coach, and this is somebody's boy, firstborn, baby, child. In fact, they even name him. So, hence, family. Yeah. So, anyways, it's um, there's a lot of. TLC that goes into uh, these builds. Sometimes we have to be the bearer of bad news. We do expect the worst, hope for the best. And anytime we cross a situation, as the professionals that we are, I mean, this is what we do for a living. And if you know your business and your job, you know what to do, what not to do, and address and be up front, up front and honest with the, the customer to let them know about any concerns that you find or see fit to discuss with the client. Uh, especially in my personal case. I lost a daughter to a go-kart 20 years ago. So I don't give a damn if you're an 80-year-old man, woman, and lived a wonderful life. This is a hobby, and not to become the death of you. And as a builder, we know if something's shoddy, shady, or just improper. So we will address all those issues, and like a marriage, discuss it with the, cu the customer, take care of them, and get a direction. Good stuff. Estimate, get some money, you know, and all that good stuff. How much time it's going to go in. We try to do our best, but it, it's all this stuff is time and material. Yeah. But, um, yeah, she's ready to job. go home. I can't wait to get the passenger, I mean the owner, in the passenger seat and just scare the pants off of him <laughs> and put a smile on his face, gigging like a little boy again. <laughs> yeah, this thing tough. Oh, yeah. Can we hear it? Sure can. I want to hear it. Ooh, look at that thing, man. Come around here. You can take a look at the interior. It's pretty clean. Jeez. Aftermarket gauges. She oh, is a stick. Man. It's um, it's a Tremec five-speed. So it's a four-gear, four-speed with uh, with reverse. You, you got your reverse. Mm -mm -mm. It's not a five-speed. Actually, no, it's not Tremec. That's um, 
Oh God, oh God, we didn't supply that. I'll have to look that up. And again, it's always best to provide all the information, especially when you're doing a motor. Guys, keep the cam card and leave it in the file. So down the road, when someone like us comes in the middle or thereafter, yeah. we know what we're working with. Yeah. That helps with stall speed, um, brake, I mean, braking, all kinds of things. It's yeah. all about application. All right. Let's, um, let's play some music for you. Woo, woo. Y'all ready? Listen to this. Three, two, one. Bam! Ooh. And that's cold. Listen to that thing. Yes, sir. Oh, that sounds so good. It's got a little bit of an exhaust leak. You can hear it. If you come close, you can hear it tick. By the way, when you fire a cold motor, give it about five minutes. Get some heat in the motor. Don't sit there gunning it. Yeah. That's how you quickly damage a motor. Okay. Oh, yeah. You're sitting at the light. Man. Some kid comes up in a tuner car. <laughs> It's always the tuner guy. Yeah. It's always the tuner guy. I had Betsy. That's you'll see that down the road. That's my shop van. She dynoed upwards of what was it 545, 532 torque. There's a 300 shot of nitrous on her, and I've never engaged it, but it was metal to break too. You could sniff it. Jeez. <laughs> so I'm sitting at a light. True story. Oh God, I don't want to sound like you know who. True story. I'm sitting at a light, and I hear this like air right i look over and it was a mature older lady in a mercedes gunning her engine ready to ready to get down yeah and i flipped the outlaw switch it was priceless <laughs> she just looked at me like what the hell is in that thing in a van yeah. and yeah that's a box on wheels but man all you need is a little extra power yeah so. tough Oh yeah. Ooh, listen to that bad boy. Again, hey, listen, I gotta go, but I wanna thank you for tuning in. Again, I'm Jim, your host. You're watching American Garage TV, and we do so appreciate your love, support. So be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, and tune in for another exciting episode like this. And again, don't forget to comment. Whatever you have up in that mind you wanna see, or in the corner of your eye, Go ahead and express it and let us know. Our duty here is to bring you fun, enjoyment, and the excitement that we share here at Jim's Speed Shop and fulfill your dreams and desires. So thanks again. <laughs>